What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to show you guys Roto 2, which is a part of the After Effects beta. Now with this plugin, they updated it from the original Roto Brush tool and I was experimenting with it. I actually took some old footage that I used for my Nike NFL commercial, brought that into the Roto 2 brush, started playing around with it and I was kind of shocked at the results that I got. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So before we get started, let me actually show you guys the original project that I'm going to be pulling my examples from. And so this is a project that we did for Nike slash NFL back in the day. So if you go to my website, wimbushimmersive.com, if you want to check it out, it's this one right here, Nike Unleashed Speed 2.0. So if I click here, you can see the project in all its glory. And so this was edited by Von Weir. It was a project that we did with Third and One Inc. And so we have a couple of the NFL players. You'll see the spot that's going to be coming up here. See, I did a lot of motion graphics for here. But the spot I'm talking about in particularly is at the end, we have a lot of NFL players jumping across a black screen. And at first we thought it would be easy to kind of just mat them out, in which it really wasn't for some reason, the way that it was lit. Whenever I try to pull the black out, it would actually pull like a lot of the clothing black out as well. And so I actually had to rotoscope it by hand back in the day to get that effect that we saw right here. And I have a couple of glitch effects in there as well. But I actually pulled in the footage that I have of Kaepernick into After Effects, tried out Roto 2, and I was really shocked by the results. So let me show you guys how quick and easy that we could pull this all together. So I have the After Effects beta open right now. And oh yeah, before I get started there, let me show you where you could download it. So if I go to my Creative Cloud desktop here, and if I come down to my lower left hand section, you can see that there's actually an icon here, a little beacon, and it says beta apps. So if I click on this, you'll actually see all the different betas that we can install and just kind of test out the different features. And so I have After Effects installed because I wanted to try out the Roto Brushing tool. And so this is how you would access it here if you want to follow along. So I'm gonna exit this out. And then you can see right now at the top left, it says After Effects Beta. So that means that you're in the right program. So I'm just gonna take my Kaepernick footage, click and drag it down here to make a new composition. There we go, if I hit zero on my keyboard, you can say it's not very long, it's just a couple of frames, but back in the day, I actually had the hand roto everything out here. And let me show you guys the example just so you can see what I'm talking about. So if I right click down here in my timeline, come down to new and click on solid, I'm actually going to color pick somewhere on his jersey because I was having the background kind of match what the uniform is here. So I'm just going to pick somewhere in here that looks really nice. Click OK. And then I'm going to bring it behind him. And then I'm going to pull this up so I can pull up my different overlay options. So if I click on this down here, you can see now that we have our modes and we start with normal mode. So if I click on normal, now if you go to screen, that's supposed to knock the blacks out. But if I hit this, you can see it's actually pulling in our background into them. And even if I add some like levels to it. So if I come over to my right hand side where it says effects and presets, type in levels, pull it in here. If I start pulling levels, you see it's not really helping at all. Like it's really blowing it out. And so what I ended up having to do was ended up just like rotoscoping everything by hand, which took, I mean, you can see it's not a lot of frames, but it still did take a long time because I had a lot of players to roto out. But with the new tool we have here, actually, let me come up here where you see this guy and he has like a paintbrush beside him. It's called the roto brush tool. If I click on this and then double click on my footage, you see that we have a new composition open up here and it's as easy as just clicking and dragging along our figure here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to go along the seams here and you'll see as soon as I let go of my left click, how easy and how accurate this is going to be. So I let go and boom, you can see it outlined them pretty well here. And if I look at his helmet, you can see that it didn't pick this part up. So it's as easy as just left clicking just kind of dragging around the area where you want to pick up. Boom, it did a pretty tight roto there. And then along his shoe, it's black against black, but I might be able to pull this off here. Let me pull this down here, left click. Boom, it looks like we're good there. And it looks like I have a little gap in here. So if I scroll in with my mouse and actually hold down the space bar and just move around my scene here, if I hold down the alt key on my keyboard and then left click and drag in here, this is actually gonna make this go away. So if you just want to get rid of some areas, you just hold down the alt key, left click, and then that goes away there. 
and then I can see his hand right here. I need to add some masking around here. So it's pretty good and accurate. I mean, this is against black, so there's a lot of contrast. So I'll do another example for you guys as well. But I just wanted to show you guys how I could have really used this tool a couple of years ago when I originally worked on this commercial. All right, cool. So there we go. I have everything outlined here in pink. And so the next step would be to come over here to your rotor brush tool and make sure you're on version two. If I click on this, you can see it goes back to the classic, which we don't want. Make sure we're on version two. And for quality, I'm actually gonna click on best here. And then everything else, I'm just gonna leave at default. And then I'm gonna hit zero on my keyboard just to let it go through the timeline. And we can see it's keeping it pretty close. So there is a little issue wherever the ball leaves his hand. So let me scroll through here. I'm right here on my timeline. I'm gonna scroll through here and I can see where he lets go of the ball. It's actually connecting all the way to the point where it releases which we could kind of just go through manually if we want. So if I say right here, there's a blank space or is this supposed to be blank? Let me hold down the alt key. There we go. And then it got rid of his finger. So I'm just gonna pull that back in. And so with the motion blur and everything, I still think this is really accurate for what it's pulling. So you can see how easy it is to kind of just go through and manually do this as well. But it did a pretty good job pulling most of the stuff out for us. So just a quick tip, I'm actually hitting the page up and page down to go up one frame on my timeline. So everything else looks pretty good. I can't tell if that's the football there, but I'll mask this in anyway. There you go. So if I hit zero on my keyboard, it's pretty accurate there, as you can see. And then I'm going to click back here where it says composition. So I'm going to come back to the beginning of my timeline here. I'm going to go over, reduce chatter, bring this up maybe 10%, use motion blur, and then let's hit zero on my keyboard, see what happens. So that looks pretty good there, especially for how quick and easy we're able to rotor that out. We didn't really have to do a lot of stuff by hand, but that shows you how powerful and accurate this is. And this is only in beta, so I can't even imagine what the final release is going to be, but... I'm thoroughly impressed in. So you might be thinking too, like Kaepernick, we had him against a back background. That should be easy, right? Like that's not really a challenge for this plugin at all. And so I'm gonna show you another example. I actually did a green screen shoot with my daughter for one of her school projects. I did a really bad job lighting her. I was in a hurry and it was really hard to key out. And so I had to do some rudder there as well, but actually I haven't tested it out yet. So let's put it to the test right now and see if we can get a, actually a good mat out of it. Now I have my daughter's footage here. I'm just gonna click and drag and make a new composition. And this one I actually shot in 4K on my black magic and you can see we have some crop bars up here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit s on my keyboard and actually scale her up so we don't have the crop marks anymore so maybe around 106 then i can move her over to the left a little bit more towards the center something like that so that should be good and then we don't need too much footage here so for this example maybe i just go like two seconds so i have two seconds here on my timeline I'm gonna hit the end button to bring it all the way here. And then I'm gonna right click right here in the gray area, hit trim the work area. Boom, there we go. So now we have two seconds worth of footage that we could work with. And then what I'm gonna do from here is I'm actually gonna bring this into another composition so that we're able to just to use this two seconds because if I don't do that, it's actually gonna do it for the duration of my clip, which is, is pretty long. So for this example, we just wanna use two seconds. So I'm gonna click that composition here, make another composition. So now we have a comp within our comp, which this will be a pre-comp. So if I actually want to be more organized, I'm just going to name this one pre-comp and then name this one main comp just so we don't start getting confused. So I have my pre-comp in here and actually for my main comp, I could probably actually make this 1920 by 1080. And then I could bring her down a little bit. So if I hold down control alt and hit F, it actually fits her to the composition. Then if I hit S, I can actually scale her up just a little bit so that I can bring her into the middle here. There we go. Sorry that I picked a bad frame to freeze you on there, <laughs> but no, it is what it is. And so we're gonna get started with the roto brush here. I'm gonna come back up here, hit the roto brush, double click on my pre-comp here, and that's gonna bring up this composition window. And so I'm just gonna do a quick 
and dirty outline of her and it should pull her in pretty accurate we're probably going to have to fix just a couple of areas like i said i did a really bad job lighting this one i apologized a billion times but you know we were in a hurry to get her school project done and what's going on with covid they were doing everything virtual and so we did what we did she still got an a on the project it turned out really well everybody was happy but yeah it was a mess trying to key this out just because you can see that actually we have the window here on the right hand side and so we actually have light shining on the right and i didn't light her properly so she's really dim and kind of blending in with the background i didn't properly light the background and it's all you know you make do it what you have there we go the ram preview is going looks like everything pulled pretty good so i'm gonna come to my main composition here you can see we have a little bit of green around here so if i come over to effects and presets actually type in matt m-a-t-t-e and then down here we actually have these two new plugins here hard mat and soft mat so i'm going to click and drag refine soft mat boom there we go that looks pretty good right there let me drop that background behind her just to see how it pulled so it looks pretty good there i mean we do have some spill around the edges we can clean it up if we want to let me do a ram preview again and see how accurate this pulled out then there you have it. We have a RAM preview playing through. Everything looks pretty good. I mean, we have some issues here around her neck. So I just have to go through and just really fine tune everything over here in the attributes. But for how quick and easy we did this, I think this puts us in a really good position. So I am thoroughly impressed by the rotoscope tool. I can't wait to see what it looks like in this final product. So hopefully this helped you guys out. I just wanted to give you a quick look at what's to come in After Effects. Like I've been saying this whole entire time, I'm actually thoroughly impressed. I mean, I used a rotoscope brush in the past. It was okay, but I still had to go through and manually do a lot of work. This kind of eliminates a lot of that. So what I would like to see from you guys is maybe go over to the beta section, download it for yourselves, and then let me know in the comments down below what your results are. I just literally downloaded this, so I don't have too much experience, but for what I was able to do this quickly, I am thoroughly impressed. So make sure you go over, download it, leave me a comment down below. Let me know your results. We can compare notes. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you click that subscribe button. As always, it helps me out if you give me a big thumbs up. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.